345 in the front part of your hymnal as we follow morning praise. It will begin at the bottom. O oh Lord, open my lips.
is recorded in James chapter 1, beginning with the 17th verse. Uh, James is a stepbrother of Jesus, and he came to faith in Jesus after Jesus' resurrection. And he was also put in charge of the church in Jerusalem. And he reminds us that every good and perfect gift is from above. And the greatest gift of all is his word. And he doesn't want us to merely listen to that word. He wants us to also follow it, to obey it. And that way, <clears throat> as we reach out and help our neighbor, we're not doing it to, to get into heaven, but as a way to thank and to praise our Lord, and also for keeping ourselves from being corrupted by this world of ours. As we read, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth. We might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, <clears throat> do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law, that's the entire scripture's law gospel, that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, <clears throat> to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Here ends our reading. Alleluia. Re <clears throat> rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Alleluia. We'll continue now with the singing of Him 464.
Amen. The word for our meditations this morning is recorded in St. Mark chapter 7, beginning with the 31st verse. <clears throat> then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went down through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee, and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought a man to him who was deaf and could hardly talk, and he begged him to place his hand on the man. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, and Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears, and he spit and touched the man's tongue. And he looked up to heaven with a deep sigh and said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. And at this the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. And Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the dumb speak. So far, our text. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, as you see and hear and learn of all the wickedness and evil that surrounds us in this world, you might get depressed, you might get frightened and scared and wonder if God has lost control of this world or if he has simply turned his back on all of us and forgotten about us. And because of that, sad to say, there are a lot of people in this world who have turned their backs on God and have walked away and said things like, well, if God is supposed to be a loving God, well, he certainly hasn't shown it towards me. My life certainly hasn't turned out the way I was hoping it was going to turn out. And the same goes for the rest of the world. Just look at all the wickedness. Why? Why? Would a loving God allow so much violence and sickness to wreak havoc in our world? Well, I know. I know. Life is frustrating. But for you and I, we have the answer to that, don't we? It's not God's fault. It is sin that pervades this world of ours. But as we're going to see today, even in this sinful world, Jesus does all things well. How do we know? Because first and foremost, he is concerned about each and every person individually. And second of all, he shows that through the love that he shows to each and every one of them. Now in our text today, we hear that there is a crowd of people that bring a man to Jesus uh, who wants and begs Jesus to place his hand on this man and heal him. This man is deaf, he cannot hear, and he cannot speak very well at all. But rather than doing this miracle in front of the people, he pulls the man aside and gets away from the crowd. Why? Well, I think of the time when Jesus came to Jericho. And remember Zacchaeus? He was up in the sycamore tree. And Jesus told Zacchaeus, come down out of the tree and go to your house because I need to meet with you. And what did he do there? He shared the beautiful gospel message with him and converted him and brought him to faith in him. And so in the same light, Jesus pulls this man aside because he is concerned about every soul. And no doubt, he shared the gospel with this man because he can look into hearts and he can see people who are hurting and not only did he share the gospel, but he explained to him what he was going to do. And 
As it says, he, he put his fingers in the man's ears, and then he spit and touched the man's tongue. And he looked up to heaven with a deep sigh and said to him, Ephetha, which means be opened. And, his, and at this the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. You see, Jesus wasn't out to impress the people. He wasn't out there to win some popularity contest and say, hey, look, look how great I am. You see, the problem with the people is that many of them thought that Jesus would become their next king. And he would make life easy for them with all the miracles that he could do. But he wasn't. He, he was more concerned about saving a soul. Quite different from famous people who always want uh, to have a, a great following and want to be heard. Now it wasn't that Jesus wasn't concerned about the people. He certainly was. But he is especially concerned for the ones who are hurting spiritually. And this man was hurting. And he needed help. And by demonstrating this, it also shows the deep-seated love that, and concern that Jesus has for each and every one of you. He has always been concerned about you long before the creation of this world. He's concerned about the trials, the troubles, the hurts, the pains that you bear. And the spiritual conflict in your life. You know, when Jesus looked into this man's eyes and touched his fingers to the man's tongue, he showed how much he cared about him. And he also desires to come to you with his mercy and love to forgive and to restore you. And spiritually, he has done that. He came to you personally to open your eyes your ears, your mouth. We were all blind, dead enemies of God. And through the waters of holy baptism in God's word, he gave you sight. So now you know the way to salvation, namely through Jesus. And we've been delivered from death, damnation. We are now God's children. We have new life as His children. Destined to be with Him in Heaven. And we are no longer enemies of God. Oh no. We are His precious children and He has promised to always be there for us each and every day of our, our lives. And He's still concerned about you because He knows you sin. And He's there to help us who have been troubled and broken by our guilt and our past sins. As we come together, as we confess our sins, He is there to forgive you. And you not only hear that here, but you hear it in His Word time and time again as He forgives you. As He remembers your sins no more. And what a comfort when we feel forgotten and alone. We can turn to His Word. We can hear how much He's concerned for us as individuals. You see, Jesus isn't like a CEO in a large corporation with lots and lots of workers. And He looks upon all those workers as numbers. It's like his kingdom is a mom and pop organization. And if you remember those mom and pop stores and that, the owners, how they always took care of their employees and watched over them and that. And that's exactly what Jesus does for you every day. 
He looks upon you as a precious soul who needs personal care and love. And again, He will never, ever take His eyes off of you. That is the promise. Not only at your baptism did you receive forgiveness, life, and salvation, but His promise that He will walk hand in hand with you as, as uh, King David wrote, that He walks with us every day through the valley of the shadow of death. Holding on to your hand just like a, a father. Holding on to his son's hand, or daughter's hand, so that they don't get lost in the crowd. That's what God does. In fact, he says to us, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. For I am God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And I will be with you to the very ends of this world until the day I take you home to heaven. How concerned was he about us? He was so concerned that he came into this world to be our substitute. He came into this world to do all things well. He came to do what we couldn't do. He first and foremost, he kept the law perfect in your behalf. He faithfully obeyed his parents. He submitted to the laws of the land. And he followed his father's commands to a T. All out of love for you. And as a teacher, he taught us what is good, right, proper, and holy in the eyes of his father. And as a king, he shows mercy not just to the great, the famous, the wealthy, but to the least and the lowest as well. Every person in this world he cares about. And as our Savior, he showed his real concern when he came and went to the cross to rescue us who are lost in sin and to bring us into his fold. Jesus could only do well because he is God and God is good. And he always submitted to his Father's will, his good and gracious will. And he did it for us as individuals, so that each and every one of you could be a member of his heavenly kingdom. And again, he still keeps on doing good as he strengthens our faith through word and sacrament, as he comforts our guilty consciences with his forgiving love and mercy. I mean, imagine that every single day of your life, as you confess your sins, you're forgiven. Now, one sin is held against you. You are holy and sinless in God's eyes. It's like, wow. Yeah. And not only does he continue to forgive you and promise you eternal life with him in heaven, but Look at all the earthly blessings that he has given to you as well. Family, friends, food, clothing, shelter, good government, good weather. Just so many wonderful things in your life. Yes. And he's not, again, concerned about you as a group, but as an individual. And... As we go through life, yes, we do experience a lot of good times in our life. But we also endure all sorts of hardships and difficulties and frustrations as well. But even in those times, our Lord is still doing all things well. When for example, some situation, unexpected health issue enters your life. Do you ever wonder, well, why, why did this happen? 
It may be that God is, that God's work can be displayed in your life. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a trusting heart. I've said before, I go to the hospital, I share God's word with you, and you just amaze me how strong your faith is, how you put your trust in the Lord. I think I go away more comforted than me coming to you. Or then again, it may be a thankful spirit. After we've gone through some tough trials, health issues in our life, and we get back on our feet, we thank and praise God. Or maybe it's a joyful attitude or a patient character that shows God's work within us. And maybe it is that opportunity to be able to share that, that joy, that happiness when we see how God works in our lives. And then again, when you look around, in the, around the world and you, yeah, you see the violence, you see the, the terror, the hunger, the disease, you can still know that the Lord is doing all things well. Now you're going, huh? Scratching your head. He's still doing all things well? Yeah. Because he has not turned his back on anyone. He continues to have his word proclaimed worldwide. If he turned your back on you, you would not have the word anymore. We would not be meeting. That would be the end. giving all these people, even the unbelievers in the world, the opportunity to hear his, his word. And yes, when you see all of the violence and everything, as we said earlier, it, it's, it's caused by sin. But then again, God can use those situations to help us draw closer to him. It's like when we see people hungry, we can say, hey, God, thank you. Thank you for all the food that you have given us to eat. Thank you for giving me shelter. Thank you for protecting me, watching over me. Thank you for, for reversing this tough situation in my life. And he also does all things well when he leads us to see our sins and our own rebellion. I know we don't like to talk about our sins. But it is he who leads you to see that you're a sinner. It is he who also leads you to repent and to forgive you for the sake of his death on the cross. And he does this. So that you learn with the aid of the Spirit, to always keep Him numero uno, number one. To keep Him in your prayers. To rely on Him, trust in Him, as He prepares you for the eternal glories of heaven. Don't ever believe Satan's lies. As we go through life, Jesus has not forgotten you, nor will he ever forget you. May his loving concern bring you comfort and peace as you not only enjoy the good times in your life, but endure the suffering in this world. And know, and know that in time, you're going to be free from all of this as he will take you home to heaven. Yes. Jesus does all things well. And remember, he is concerned about each and every one of you and he shows it in the way that he loves you and prepares you for this glorious life in heaven. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding 
Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And let us now sing hymn 453. <laughs>
morning, O oh Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer.
Again, good morning to everyone. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Today